Starship's booster raises the Texas temperature as Elon informs us what's happening. Dragon continues to whore herself out to those willing to pay for a ride. Starlink pretty much does the same. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. It was a solid week for SpaceX operations at Starbase, kicking things off on Monday with a Booster 7 seven engine spin up. Occurring just shortly before the first ever seven engine static fire, as confirmed by Elon and SpaceX. Enough power to clear away the dust. But not so much power, the booster takes off with the launch table attached. Elon kindly following up on Twatter, riding Booster 7 now returns to the high bay for robustness upgrades and Booster 8 moves to the pad for testing. Next big test is probably full stack wet dress rehearsal, then 33 engine firing in a few weeks. And so the former bit was made so. That same night moving B8 out of the mega bay and down Highway 4 to the launch site, where B7 was at the same time having some engines removed. Then on Wednesday, they lifted her fat ass off the table and rolled her back up the road to the mega bay. SpaceX providing the aerial time lapse for us. But be sure to stow your magnifying glasses, this ant colony packs its own heat. Elon clarifying that their current focus is on reliability upgrades for Booster 7's orbital flight and completing Booster 9, which has many design changes, especially for full engine rapid unscheduled disassembly isolation. Translation, they want to protect the engines in case the vehicle explodes. They're taking a little risk there, Elon wrote, in regard to attempting the orbital flight with Booster 7 and that its engine isolation was done as a retrofit. That first orbital flight is now expected maybe as early as October, but November seems highly likely. We'll have two boosters and ships ready for orbital flight by then, which would be 24-7 and 25-8, with full stack production at roughly one every two months. After Booster 7 was relocated to the construction facility, Lab Padres cams captured the orbital launch mount being put through a series of fire suppression and water deluge tests before Booster 8 takes the throne. Starship Gazer captured the installment of a new cover getting permanently welded over Ship 24's Pez door which means it appears SpaceX may have abandoned the plan to deploy V2 satellites on the first orbital mission. Gazer also spotted a new Pez dispenser getting installed into a future Starship currently under construction. Leno toured Starbase with Elon and premiered it this week on a CNBC show, Jay Leno's Garage. I haven't had the chance to watch the entire thing yet, but the full interview is posted for a limited time. And from what I have seen, it does feature some pretty rare glimpses happening behind the scenes. The public isn't isn't really aware of this, and I think this would be a, a, just a good thing to educate people on. It's just how absolutely fundamental it is to make a fully reusable rocket. Greg Scott took another aerial trip around Cape Canaveral for some views of Starship's East Coast launch tower. It has been fully stacked, and Elon wrote it could receive its first super heavy booster around the second quarter of 2023. Those initial vehicles being brought by boat from Starbase and Star Factory at Roberts Road won't be in operation by then. Please be sure to support local photographers like Greg, Lab Padre, and Starship Gazer using their links below. Aerial trips like these are not cheap. Speaking of cheap, Greg also took a pic of the government's leaky piece of shit still not lifting off from Pad 39B, and of course still not reusable. Cheers, NASA. Maybe if you spent more time on the mission at hand and less on the White House's agenda to focus on everyone's genitals and skin color, SLS would have done something useful by now. Anyway, back to the private sector, where things get done. The commander for SpaceX's second crew of citizens to go to space, Polaris Dawn, sat down for an interview with CNBC on Monday, discussing the details of their mission, like the EVA their crew will conduct. So we're gonna do a spacewalk. We're gonna vent the entire Dragon capsule down to vacuum, and then we're gonna exit the vehicle. And, and, and the reason for that is when we do get back to the moon and eventually get to Mars, we're probably gonna to wanna to leave the safety of our vehicle or habitat and get work done on the, on the, on the surface of the planet. Polaris Dawn's tentative liftoff date has slipped from December to early next year. Dragon has sold a couple more seats through Axiom Space to Saudi Arabia for a future commercial mission. Reuters reporting their joy ride to space will be a roughly week long stay early next year. This will only be the second time the planet will see Saudis in space. Space Saudis. The first was Sultan bin Salim al Saad, who flew on the shuttle in 85. After four previous scrubs due to weather, SpaceX finally threaded the needle on Sunday night, launching their latest flock of Starlink satellites from Slick 40 at the Cape. This was SpaceX's 180th mission overall, and the sixth for this Falcon booster, landing successfully on Just Read the Instructions station on the Atlantic. Their next Starlink mission is set for Saturday evening at 7.32 p.m. Eastern. We'll watch it together live on Rumble. One of the first air carriers to adopt Starlink internet, JSX, 
has successfully tested the service during a flight from Burbank to San Jose. Their passengers were easily able to stream videos and host video chats through 100 megabits per second speeds. Elon making a comment to a Teslarati article that with some improvements, Starlink will achieve three times that. But serially guys, Starlink is primarily meant to help those who really need it. Like kids trapped on school buses as they're shipped to and fro government run hell holes, otherwise known as public schools. SpaceX sent a letter to the FCC asking the agency to pay them to provide Starlink service to underprivileged students who have long bus rides through rural areas. You guessed it, in the name of equity. <laughs> Gee, I wonder if SpaceX's lawyers knew the exact words to use on this woke administration to milk the suckers for more money. I'm sure the government believed you when you told them that, and I tip my cap to you for profiting off their ignorance. Don't get me wrong, besides reinforcing the big government system that fails to adequately prepare future generations to become productive members of society, I'm all about these kids not having to sit in silence on the bus, reflecting on the day's events as they're forced to stare at nature through the window like I had to. Damn it, kids these days have the right to Google the answers to their homework before they get home at the expense of the American taxpayer. How many different moons does the Earth have? Four, four. Yes. Starlink is already connecting schools in the Amazon. Has Jeff even thanked Elon for it? And as the CCP continues to spread its tentacles throughout the continent of Africa, SpaceX is helping the Republic of Zambia stand on its own two feet through the fruits of Western capitalism. Elon is looking forward to selling Starlink service to the people of the East African country, but not just them. He also wants to ask the US government for an exemption to Iranian sanctions so he can sell it to the people of Iran. I do have to admit that sounds like a better plan than flying the regime billions in cash on pallets in the dead of night. Right, Joseph? Elon is even looking into doing the same for the people of Cuba. Gosh, just look at how this evil free market corporation finds itself in a position to aid subjugated foreigners suffering under the boot of government tyranny. What gives the SpaceX imperialists the right to undermine these cultures? Yeah, okay, sure, it was okay for America to force people to cover their face because it was Lord Fauci's second commandment, but Iran can't force people to wear masks to please some dead guy they worship? While we're on the topic of world news, allow me to talk to you about our sponsor. The Epic Times brings you breaking US and world news on all your devices, along with original Epic TV programs like Crossroads, Facts Matter, American Thought Leaders, and award-winning documentaries. They report important news that other media ignore while focusing on clear, fact-based journalism without spin or hidden agendas. Obviously, my channel does not operate in the same way. My show is unapologetically pro-SpaceX and anti-woke when need be because myself and Elon view the woke mind virus as a threat to humanity's journey to the stars. But the Epic Times just reports the facts and trusts you, their discerning readers, to arrive at your own conclusions. Of course, as an avid reader of news myself, I'm all about that. As a science teacher, I told my students to question everything, including me, including the science. I hope all of you do that too. I mean, if COVID taught us anything, it's that critical thinking has become a rare and underrated skill. You know, just give me the facts, and then if I feel I need to do more research to arrive at my own opinion, I will. Easy day. That's what the Epic Times will do for you. So why not give them a try? Go to epictim.es slash spaceeccentric, link in the description below. And they even have a special offer for this audience. One dollar for two months. So why not? Head on over to epictim.es slash spaceeccentric and subscribe meow. But meow, it's time for today's honorable mention. Rocket Lab held an Investor Day presentation in New York this week under a space shuttle, because they could. Their CEO, Peter Beck, who I once had the pleasure of interviewing, spoke on a number of topics, but the one I wanna cover in this segment is the status of their new rocket, Neutron, a 3D printed, rapid reusable two-stage carbon composite orbital launch vehicle. So the vehicle is capable of lifting 15 tons to orbit expendable. Um, and there are some expendable missions, there'll be some end of life missions that we'll, we will do that uh, if the customer requires. It lifts 13 tons reusable if we land downrange. Uh, it lifts eight tons if we return it to the pad. Neutron has had a pre-makeover and is being made slightly less hungry hungry. Two fairing halves have replaced the original four, but will still remain attached to the first stage as the second stage is regurgitated out. Using just two halves reduces the amount of angle they must be opened at and enables more robust fairing panels. Nine reusable Archimedes engines now encompass the first stage, one vacuum engine will push the second stage, and Archimedes will breathe fire later this year. Its testing site has been secured at NASA's Stennis Space Center's A3 test complex in Mississippi, and Neutron itself will be built, developed, and launched on Wallops Island, Virginia. 
The toughest bit is complete, getting through the design phase and moving on to building the tools and molds, which is where the company is at now. And while the rocket is designed to be human rateable, Rocket Lab isn't sure yet if they'll build a human rated capsule for it. But if they do, they say this is what it could look like. The message here is like, this is happening. This is not, uh, this is not a PowerPoint hope. Um, or, or anything. This is this is happening. We we are we are building this thing. There's real hardware coming, and uh, and it's, it's, it's an exciting time. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Not of approval to those of you supporting the channel on our locals page. Of course, if my sarcasm has offended you in any way, please be sure to comment your triggered feelings below for the algorithm, because I give a shit. The rest of you, be sure to have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.